just a, a little bit about my background. First, uh, I'm a clinical psychologist. I've been licensed in the state of Maryland for over 20 years, um, and I've done a lot of work with juvenile offenders in a variety of contexts. Uh, and I think that's been really the nice thing about um, the career that I've had is, is uh, uh, first I started out um, doing adolescent inpatient work, uh, so, so sort of saw the broad spectrum of mental health concerns with adolescents, uh, not just conduct problems, delinquency, but sort of a broad range of, of concerns. Um, and so did that for a few years. Um, for 13 years, I worked at a committed facility for teenage boys. Um, this was a six to nine month program for boys in the state of Maryland who'd committed some kind of significant offense, um, usually a significant one. And they spent six to nine months at this program. Um, and I was the only person providing uh, individual and family counseling in the program. Uh, and, it was, and I was there part time. Um, and and it was, so it was a 44 bed program. And at any one point in time, only about eight of the, or t eight to 10 of the boys were receiving clinical services. And so um, in, in my role there, I did a lot of individual and family therapy. Um, and really the nice thing about that experience was getting to work with the boys in a long term uh, uh, setting. So really uh, getting to know them well, uh, getting to see over the course of 13 years a lot of different kids and, and really getting a feel for the kind of kids who wind up deep in, into the deep end of a, of a juvenile services system. This talk is part of a series of talks on, um, on juvenile delinquency. And um, if you go to the TZK Seminars uh, website, you can see the whole list of, uh, of webinars that I do. They're typically on Friday afternoons from, from 2 to 3.30 Eastern time. So I encourage you to check those out and, and look at any that might interest you. Um, today's topic, let's jump into it. Um, attention Deficit Dis uh, Hyperactivity Disorder, ADHD is something that you really must talk about when you're talking about delinquency. Um, there's really no avoiding it. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about the numbers behind that, but basically there's just a tremendous overlap between juvenile delinquency or uh, what we might more scientifically refer to as conduct disorder, right? Um, so the overlap between conduct disorder and ADHD is fairly significant. Kids with ADHD are impulsive. They have trouble taking something that you teach them in the therapy hour, right, once a week, and using it, you know, three days later in a situation that comes up at school. They have a hard time doing that. Individual therapy is not a real powerful treatment. I'm not, I'm not saying it doesn't help ADHD kids at all, but it's not a real powerful and effective treatment for ADHD, okay? Um, and that's one thing to think about because ADHD kids are impulsive. But then if you take an ADHD kid and on top of that, they have these problems with aggression uh, and, and, and maybe even, you know, antisocial sneaky kinds of things, deceitfulness, stealing, these kinds of things. Now you have a kid who is really going to have a hard time using treatment because he may not be motivated to change his behavior. Plus, even if he was, he has trouble taking what you're teaching him and using it outside the therapy hour. And so um, among kids with ADHD, if they have conduct disorder, in addition to that, their prognosis is worse than with ADHD alone. Also, among conduct disorder kids, if you have ADHD as well, your prognosis is going to be worse than if you have just conduct disorder.